was a neophyte, when I was new to the game, I made a lot of mistakes, and this is one of them. I was at Peter Street, and I grew up, you know, I used to live in the West End, so I thought I could tell what a crackhead looked like. You know, there's a certain crackish look about a crackhead. There's just some about them, even when they're cleaned up, you know you're dealing with a crackhead, usually. Except, in this case, I did not. I was at Peter Street, bought this huge L-shaped unit, and I needed help because I went back by myself. And, and when you get in the business, sometimes you get a little egotistical. It's like, yeah, I've cleaned out 10 by 20s and 10 by 30s by myself. It takes a long time, but I can do it. I get in there, and I just turned into a punk bitch. Moved the first box, and there was something real heavy, and it hit me upside the head, and I was like, man... It's kind of like when a quarterback gets hit really hard, he gets a little, jig, a little jittery, a little shaky. That's what happened to me. And I was like, All right, let me go get some help. So I go around. There's clearly crackheads abound. And I'm thinking I'm doing the right thing. And I was like, oh, this guy looks clean. And he talks and he comes over. The first clue that's to let me know I was messing up, he extended his hand to shake my hand. In the hood, that's a crackish move. That's a crackish move. I, but see, I just got hit in the head. I didn't know. I was okay. He's shaking my hand. He introduces himself. His name's Jerome. All right, all right, Romy, Rome. We're going to go do this. I need this unit cleaned up. You get this. And we like moving boxes and stuff. And all is going well for about 10 minutes. About 10 minutes. It was good. Then all of a sudden, I go back to the unit. And he's like doing this. Hmm. I'm like, Romy, Rome, what are you doing? Oh, no, no, nothing, boss man, nothing, boss man. But see, I was hitting the head because I was like, that's a crack move. He's looking at anything white and he's hoping it's crack. But I let it go. So we're moving stuff again, this time five minutes, and I go back and he's like, Hey, wrong me wrong, you know? Time is money, bro. Time is money. Oh, okay, boss man, okay. And I don't know what's wrong with this brother because I've used crackheads before, but they were pretty active. They didn't like to lift heavy stuff. If you check out the video, Three Mexicans and the Crackhead. And, you know, we're moving stuff. And the room at this point is still half full. And U Haul is crazy because they were going to close very, very, very soon. And I was like, damn, I'm going to have to come back. So when I said that to myself, he went into slow motion. I was like, this fool trying to play me, milk this out so he can get his money. And I messed with him. And see, this is where I went wrong. This is where I went way wrong because, you know, we got what we could on the truck, shut it down. And he's like, all right, man, good job, good job, good job. And, you know, I had promised him 10 bucks an hour, and we were at like an hour and a half, so it was 15 bucks. Then we get on the, get outside the building and everything, and, he's, and I was like, damn, I'm about to go get this rock. What did I say that for? Just messing with him, right? Because, you know, I wasn't 100% sure he was a crackhead, but it was like Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. You're going to get a rock. My, I know a place. I know a place. I know a place. It ain't that far. We could be over there like that. I mean, you're going to get a rock. Hey, forget. Don't pay me. Get me a rock, man. I need a rock. It. He is scratching like he has 1,000 fleas up in his head. And I'm like, oh, God. I'm going to have to fumigate the truck. And then he straightens up. So we're going to get that rock, man. I didn't know. You kind of husky. You know, most folks who smoke are a little on the small side. <laughs> and he starts poking me with them burnt up fingertips. What is up with the fingertips, man? And I'm just sitting there like getting very paranoid. I am in a truck with a crackhead that thinks we're going to get a rock. And I'm in the hood and the sun has set. So my mind's like, I need to get him out of here as soon as possible. I need to get him out of this truck. Because I don't know. He's a crackhead. 
He's on the edge. And I have induced him to think that he's getting something because, you know, he was just going to get the 15 bucks and then zoop, over there and get the rock. But now he thinks he's going to get a limousine ride in the hood in his big ass truck to get a rock. Wasn't happening. Wasn't happening. Wasn't happening. So I'm sitting there like, how do I get a crackhead out of this truck? So we, we get ready to go. And then I was like, I know a better place. It's over by the city jail. And he's like, there ain't nobody over there selling nothing over there by the jail. I don't want, hey, 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 I don't know, I don't know, no, no, no. And at that point, I knew he had warrants. <laughs> I was like, oh, we a little nervous about the po po. <laughs> I was like, how many warrants you got? He's man, I lost count, I lost count. We don't need to go over there, we don't need to go over there. We don't need to go, hey, give me the money. Hey, fuck it, let me out now. <laughs> All I know, I could have had Jack the Ripper up in the truck. We pulled, I hit a stoplight. <clears throat> Dude was like, boing. He bounced out like a pogo stick. I was like, Whew. and he was just walking on down the street, looking back. Walking down the street. So please, when you're out there in this business, make sure you know who you're picking up. I don't know what that dude was on. It wasn't good. I think it was crack plus something else because he had some serious issues. And he looked straight. He looked straight. But this is what happens to you when you go to Peter Street. And most of you would be wise enough, especially the white folks. They're bringing their own crew. They ain't hiring nobody. <laughs> nope. Oh, well, well, thank you for the offer. But uh, we, we got that cover, partner. You have a nice day. do 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 I know, dear. I know. But God bless him. Do, 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 do. <laughs> you know what? This shit's fun as hell now because when I was going through it, it wasn't funny. But now I can see the humor and comedy of this stuff because, uh, <laughs> you know, that was really stupid. I mean, I mean, seriously, he could have been like a psychological, pathological liar, killer. They could be the serial killer. Who knows? A psychopath. That's the word. But this is kind of, you know, what happens in the storage auction business. And uh, there's some stuff I'm going to share now because uh, one person, well, I thought we were friends. I'm going to tell all his stories. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I know where all the bodies are buried, boo. It's coming. It's coming. All right. This is Glendon with Making Money with Storage Unit Auctions.